guys. I'm doing a live stream. Oh, someone's already here. That was fast. Good job. You guys are on your game, yo. What is up, people? What's happening with the hairs everywhere? So, hi. Hi, guys. Hi. How you feeling, goth girl? Hey, guys. I love your hair, too. Thank you. Just kidding. I finally washed it last night, so that was that's a plus. But you knew that already, I think. What do I do for a terrible sore throat? That's a good question because I have one right now. I would like to know as well. I don't like normal cough drops because they're way too like menthol-y. Menthol-y? menthol, -y? menthol -y. They have too much menthol in them. And so I like to suck on the ones. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in a silly mood, so be prepared. I like to suck on the ones, um, what are they called? The fruit breezers. Those are super good. It's kind of like a balance. They're a lot sweeter. They put more sugar. It pretty much just tastes like candy, but with a little bit of medicine in it. So those are the only ones I like. But other than that, I have no idea. Frazzles and ice cream and the things. So, aw, thank you. You look beautiful too, Maria. Someone just asked what was my last name before I married Danny. My last name was Hassan. H-A-S-S-O-N, which is a name that you've probably never heard, and I got that a lot growing up. I was always called Sharon Hansen in school because they couldn't say Shannon Hassan. So. so I really only had to like switch the last few letters in my last name. It's still H-A-S, so that's cool. Warm jello and honey for sore throats? Ooh, Tiger and Bella, thank you for that. Warm jello? The volume is low? Should I just talk louder? Why is it low? What am I doing? Is this better? Should I just yell the whole time? Why do you guys watch me? <laughs> I just woke up from a nap, by the way. Had my doctor appointment today, and then I came home and I crashed. How do you deal with gastroparesis pain? Well, um, the first thing I do is try to poop because that helps. So the enema, I like Citrusol because it's like a natural fiber type of a pill. It's not a laxative. Um, and uh, pain medication if I'm hurting bad enough or <sighs> I'll have Danny like rub my stomach a lot and kind of like get things moving down there so that it can help me either poop or let out gas or whatever needs to happen that can't usually happen for me. So, um, I don't know. It's a tough one. It's hard. It is one of the hardest things ever. Have I tried essential oils for that? I have not. My sister used to sell those and I remember her suggesting me some, but I never actually tried it. So maybe I should, which, which one would it be? I don't know. How do I feel about the pro Anna thing? Bethany, well, Bethany McPeak. Is that really your name? That's the best name ever. Um, I, I hate it. <laughs> That's why I like to mock it on my channel. And I've got a few other things coming up where I'm gonna mock the pro Anna because it's stupid. I used to be part of it. I used to go looking for it and no, it's not good. It's not good. It's sad. That's what it is. It's sad. How am I feeling? Hi, Jade, how are you? I have a song coming up that I'm gonna sing for you. I'm dedicating it to you, because that's how much I love you. Anyway, what was your question? You got in a car accident, Savvy, are you okay? Oh no. How did I get rid of my widow's peak? These are good questions. Okay, first of all, how am I? I am tired. I miss you too, Maggie. Okay, I gotta stop reading so I can like answer a question at one minute. <laughs> Um, I'm just tired and hurting and feeling a little down because I uh, went to the doctor today and <laughs> the, I, I'm, I'm about to talk about weight. So if that's going to trigger you, go away and come back in like a minute. But so I got weighed today at the doctor and I have gained in the past six weeks, I've gained 30 pounds 
and 20 of those pounds have been in the last week, which is like not normal and not okay because nothing has changed. I haven't changed anything. It's just, I don't know what it is. So she thinks it's water weight um, because I've been having so many periods. She thinks that, because usually when you have your period, you gain water weight. Um, for me, it's usually only about four pounds, but since I'm getting periods like three times a month now, um, it's probably, she thinks it's water weight from that, but I don't know. So anyway, I'll be getting my surgery soon. That's the good news. She approved me for it. Yay. So yeah. Okay. What else was there? You guys had some good questions. I know I forget all of them. So, aw, thank you, Jody. Thanks for praying for me. Hi, Amy. I talked to her about that thing that you told me to, and she's going to set me up to get the test done. Savvy's good. My car is fine. No one got hurt. The other car is fine. I'm so glad you're okay, Sav. Aww. Do you think being a Mormon has helped you through your journey? Absolutely. God, in general, has helped me. Uh, let's see. Surgery for what? For my endometriosis, where they have to go in and like scrape it out of me. And if they don't, it will spread. And I haven't had that surgery in nine years. And you're supposed to get it every two or three years. And I ran it in nine years. So I know it's spread all over my body. Um, oh, this is so like going so fast. Okay. I love you too, bub. Where are you going? I'm trying to read all these. Um, oh, there's so many comments. Let's see. Why am I having so many periods? I don't know. It's got to be from the endometriosis, but I'm over it. Um, would I ever use mar medical marijuana? Probably not. Maybe if I had cancer, but I don't know. I don't think so, though. Probably not. Um, thanks, Amy. Uh, oh. Rose Erdman, yeah, that's a good question. Rose Erdman said, how did you get rid of your widow's peak? So I used to have a widow's peak that went down to here. Um, if you go look at my videos as me as me of me as a child, I wish I had those. I have no idea where those pictures are, but I was really self-conscious of it. Like, I was a very hairy child. I still am pretty hairy. Um, <laughs> sounds weird. My hair used to be twice as thick of, as this, and the hairline came down, I had a widow's peak. I had way bushier eyebrows. Like, I just was a very hairy child. Like, I already have really big sideburns that I hate that will not go away, but they used to be even bigger. Um, so I used to have to like get my hair thinned because that's how thick it was. But anyway, when I got to high school, I decided I hated my widow's peak, and so I started shaving it. I would just literally shave up to that line. And the problem with that <laughs> is that you have to shave it like twice a day in order for it to not show. And like, you know, how men, a lot of men have to like shave once or twice a day or else they'll give that, get that five o'clock shadow or whatever. That's what it was. And so I was shaving constantly and <laughs> it just wasn't working. So it got to a point where I decided to get it laser removed, but I had to grow it out a little bit first. And so I had this little triangle of little stubs of hair right there until it was able to uh, be laser removed. And then I think I had like maybe 10 laser treatments and it, and it stayed gone forever. That was like 15 years ago and it's still gone. And now my hairline is receding. So if I would have just waited then I would have been fine, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> where is Danny? Danny should be home soon. Okay. I know widow's peaks are cute. I don't know why I didn't like it. Widow's Peak Unite. Hashtag Widow's Peak Unite. I love it. Shani, would you ever see a psychic? Um, probably not. 
I've talked about this before. I don't judge any of you guys if you go to psychics or if you like psychics or whatever. But for me personally, I have this thing where you guys, I've told you about this so many times. I'm extremely intuitive. Like I will dream that people die right before they die. And I'll dream that people get married right before they get together even. And like I'll dream what people's babies are and I'll dream that people are pregnant before they find out they're pregnant. Like I'm a little bit overly intuitive that way. And I consider it to be like a gift and I just don't like it when people use it to like for money. And I don't think I'm psychic or anything, but I think that a lot of people in the world have the same intuitiveness that I have and they turn it into profit. But I mean, I get that for some people it's very helpful for them. Like it's, it's therapeutic for them to have a psychic tell them things that are comforting or things from you know, whatever, or like a bright future or whatever. I get it. Like, I don't judge anybody, but for me personally, I just don't like it. I don't know. But well, to each his own, you know. Um, psychic abilities, is that what I have? Maybe. How do I feel about the psychic twins? Who's the, I don't know who that is. Um, I feel cold and alone. Have you felt this way? I'm sorry you feel cold and alone. Why do you feel cold? Because it's cold? It dropped so many degrees here in Utah today. Oh my gosh, it's fall already. Like we went from having 90 to 100 degree weather to 55 today. So I'm so excited. I love fall and it rained all day. I was so happy. Oh. Uh, the one CXNT says, what's your favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? That's a good question. My favorite flavor of Kool-Aid is Tiger's Blood, and it's something that I made up myself. I mean, I'm sure someone in the world has made it up too. But you just take strawberry Kool-Aid and add a little bit of coconut extract to it, and it tastes like Tiger's Blood. So, you're welcome. Other than that, I like the black cherry, and Danny and I both like to mix the black cherry and the lime together. That's really good. Ooh, now I want Kool-Aid. We haven't made Kool-Aid forever. We used to live all that off that stuff because, yeah, because it's delicious. Have I drunk, have I drank tiger's blood before? Do you mean real tiger's blood? Has anybody? What? I don't know your question. My mouth is so sore, guys. You hate Kool-Aid? No well. Are you putting enough sugar in it? Oh, so fast, so fast, so fast. <laughs> um, Emily Pritchett needs prayers. Prayers for Emily. Of course I'll be praying for you, honey. Do I drink any caffeinated beverages? Um, Sometimes, but they, I actually don't like like it i don't like carbonation except i'm drinking this but it's like totally flat i let it go flat i'm not a big carbonation person it hurts my mouth it hurts my throat it hurts everything um it makes me bloated because again i have a hard time exiting anything out of the bottom area including just gas so i don't like to drink it because then i'll be bloated um but i used to drink it more often and i once in, a, once in a while, I'll drink some of Danny's Dr. Pepper, or if I'm like really, really nauseated, then I'll drink carbonation, because that helps a lot. Do I drink alcohol? I don't drink alcohol. This is not alcohol. Does this, oh, it does look like beer. This is butterscotch beer, and it's so good. It tastes like a butterscotch, like a melted butterscotch candy, and it's divine. It's so good. Is drinking alcohol against my religion? What does that say? Cassandra Richardson said, do you drink alcohol or is that against your religion? Yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's one of the rules in our religion that we have, you know, the choice to follow or to not, and I follow it. Um, but I don't judge anybody who does. I never have, never will. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, Maggie, you know, we've brought it over to the house many times. Maggie, you asked me if I was coming Sunday. What's happening Sunday? Danny doesn't tell me anything. <sighs> I 
Have I ever been drunk? No. Mm -mm. I've been high, but not drunk. I tasted beer once and it was an accident. So. I guess I should tell you that story. I can't just like leave it like that. Um, wait a minute. No, I didn't. I'm thinking of coffee. No, yes, coffee. Well, I've tried coffee recently, but that was like medically. But the first time I tried coffee, it was an accident. I thought that it was um, hot chocolate and I, and I drank a little bit of it. I was at my friend's house and her brother drinks coffee and, and there was the coffee, his coffee mug and my hot chocolate and her hot chocolate and I just grabbed the wrong one and drank it. And it was really good, I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, Max. Wait, what? Wait, I didn't read the whole thing. Oh, right, okay, yes, Maggie. Wait, are we getting together though? I don't know. High from coffee? No. High from, uh, well, the first time I got high was um, an accident and I did a video about that. Go watch it. Uh, have I ever done any drugs? I've never really done any drugs. Like I've taken narcotics many, many, many times for all my health problems, but I've never like smoked weed or did marijuana or wait, marijuana is weed, did cocaine or heroin or anything like that. No. I think I saw what you said, Maggie. Uh, when do we get an office tour? Oh yeah, and a living room tour. Okay, um, tomorrow, tonight maybe, I don't know. I gotta go tidy up up there so you can see it when it's all clean. I am live, Emma, welcome. Am I currently trying for a baby right now? Um, no. When is my birthday? October 19th. It's coming up. No, we're not trying to have kids right now, but if it happened, then, then I would let it happen and we would be very blessed to have that miracle. <laughs> and I have faith that I would be, uh, that I would be blessed to have the strength if it did happen. Yes, prescription drugs can be very dangerous. I know. It's probably a stupid question, but why not try every day? Try what? Are we talking about having a baby still? Um, Juliana, Juliana Productions, honey. Um, don't be focusing on that anymore and don't let your friends like make you focus on that kind of thing. Don't, don't obsess over your weight like that. Like I know it's hard. I get it. Like I'm going through it right now that I just gained a ton of weight and I'm upset about it, but don't like you're putting a lot of comments of, oh, is this weight of mine too much? Or my friend told me to starve it that she won't start starve with me and it's annoying or whatever. It's so dangerous if you have a close friend that also has eating disorder tendencies. It, you're twice as likely to fall into it. So just be really careful. Like, it doesn't matter what you weigh. It really doesn't when it comes down to it. And you're beautiful and don't focus on that anymore. Seriously. Seriously don't. Um, can I shave my hair off at 100,000 subscribers? Are you joking? Is this a joke? Get out of my live stream. I'm just kidding. No, no. I could never, ever, ever shave my head unless I had to. Um, yeah, no. But I did say a while back, and most of you have forgotten, but some of you have been reminding me that if I reach 100,000 subscribers, then I will get in a bikini for a video and show you my body, because that would be terrifying. But we'll see. We'd have to get to 100K by Christmas though, so. Otherwise I won't do it. See, I know it, that won't happen, so. Oh, what if it did, can you imagine? Oh, that would be so cool. I won't, Maggie. Oh, I'll never shave my hair, come on now. Hi, Polly. I love your hair too. <laughs> 
No, and Danny would kill me if I shaved my hair too. Uh What's the pillow behind you? This one? is a pillow that was made by Haley's mom. Is Haley here today? Um, Ronna Lee. She came to the Utah meet and greet and she made this for me. Maggie, you're texting me. Oh, you're, are you watching and texting me at the same time? How are you doing that? You must have your iPad too. Cool. Um... Have you tried Gogurt yogurt? Yes, it's really good. I love Gogurt. Um, <laughs> uh, I know. I used to have my old text message sound was like, I should just show you. Oh, I need to show you my phone case. Oh, this camera is not going to do justice, but look at this. Are you kidding me? Can we just talk about that? How beautiful is that? It's stunning. I'm gonna show you the old one that I used to have <laughs> because you guys know like my phone gives me so much anxiety, it's not even funny. And so, um, what am I looking for? <sighs> Which one was it? all day long. <coughs> Bless me. Dang it, where is it? It's so funny. my phone. That's my calling the sound. Sounds like Super Mario. Dang it. Maybe they got rid of it, but it was like a, it was like a suspenseful noise, like a scary, like something that would be in a scary movie. <laughs> Never mind. It, the, the joke isn't going to land because you can't hear it. So anyway, moving on. Mm, Kinsey has a good question. Ask it again. And I'll try and watch for it. Oh, so sweet. Tastes like candy. Oh, it's going so fast. <laughs> Would I adopt if I can't have kids? Maybe. Not right now, but maybe in the future. Um, I don't see that quite I'm waiting for that one question because I said I would but now I'm not seeing it uh, where is Danny working he is on set with Studio C and he should be home soon oh is the volume low again should I just yell the whole time Best Halloween costume? Halloween? Did I just say Halloween? See, I think I want to say Halloween. Most people do. But most people in Utah say Halloween. But I think I like Halloween better. Halloween. No, don't yell? Okay, I'll just... I don't know what to do. Half of you are like, it's too quiet. And half of you are like, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rest in peace, earbuds. <laughs> How has my ba day been eating wise? That's a good question. Um, I what have I eaten today? I ate a cucumber with ranch, chopped up with homemade ranch. I ate um, a fruit snack at the doctor because they had me waiting for a long time and I and they were like way behind, so they felt bad. So they brought in this basket of treats and they're like, "Hey, do you want a snack while you wait?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I ate some fruit snacks. Um, what else did I eat? I think that's it, because then I took a nap and I just woke up, so I'm about to eat dinner. I don't know what yet. I'm either going to make something or have Danny pick something up. Uh, Shani, why, okay, Igula? Shani, why don't you and Danny have sex a few times a day to have a baby? Well... If we were trying to have a baby, we would. That's normal for people who are trying, but we're not, first of all. Second of all, that's still very painful. Third of all, Danny is gone all the time. He is literally working 16 hours every single day. I do not see him except Sundays. Tomorrow I get to hang out. Tomorrow they're giving it him off of stuff. Tomorrow he gets the day off, but man, I never see him anymore, so. Sorry, that's not going to happen. I'll let you know if it does. <laughs> uh, I'm in a goofy mood. Paul! Oh my gosh, that's weird that you just did that because I did that today. You're going to see that on my vlog. I did, I don't, <gasps> that's funny, Paul. You're going to laugh so hard. I did that exact hand motion with my hands in part of my vlog today. Oh man, that's funny. Great minds think alike. I'm sorry. Sick minds think alike. <laughs> Paul, you got panda? <gasps> Paul, go get me some panda because Paul won't, or Danny won't. Danny doesn't like panda. But I do. I think it's good. Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Um, McKinsey. Oh, this is the one I was waiting for. Hello from Germany. Hello. Um, I am a male struggling with anorexia and bulimia. In your opinion, do some people think that only women have eating disorders? Um, oh, why do you, why do some people think that women only have eating disorders? Because not enough people speak out about it. So like not, I mean, I'm educating people on a lot about eating disorders and I, I love nothing more when I see a male do an eating disorder channel. So like Tofu Tommy, my dear, dear friend has anorexia and he talks about it on his channel. Tofu Tommy is the name. <laughs> and then this other kid that I just met recently, his name is Alec and his channel is, um, Alec is nostalgic, I think. Yeah, Alec is nostalgic and he's freaking adorable and he has an eating disorder. So I'm really excited that those channels are coming out. So if you've ever thought of starting one just for awareness itself, you should do it. But I think it's only because you, we only hear about the women side of it. We don't hear about the male side because I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's because in general, we feel like, like we as women feel like we want to be smaller and generally men feel like they want to be bigger and stronger. Like that's what the society says is attractive is to be bigger and stronger when you're a male and to be little and skinny when you're a female. So I think that's why. And so it's almost like people don't acknowledge that men can have eating disorders too, which is really stupid. So really stupid. Mm -hmm. Yes, there needs to be more male eating disorder channels. Is your hair as thick as it looks? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I pooped it a little bit up here today, but not much. I just finally washed it, that's all. It looks thicker when I wash it. When I don't, it starts to look greasy and thin and gross, so. Mm. But it's a pain in the butt, hard. Mm. We should call Danny and see if he's off yet. Why am I ignoring you when you talk to me? Because I didn't see you before. 
There's 70 people here sending messages very quickly and it's hard to read every single one. I'm not ignoring anybody, so sorry. Um, how did my appointment go? It went well. She uh, approved me to get surgery. She said I'm healthy enough now. Um, and then she gave me phone numbers for a new therapist and then I made an appointment to see a psychiatrist which is the one that like prescri prescribes you medication and like gives you an evaluation so that we can talk about the bipolar or um, borderline personality disorder which I'm starting to think it's more of that the more that you guys have told me about that the more familiar that sounds so you're welcome hi Oh, you were? Oh, so you knew I was going to call you? Yep. Danny was watching. He, where are you? Why didn't you call me? But are you, you're a post to pick up dinner. And then I decided I'm not. Okay. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. That's cute. He was watching, guys. I feel so Twitter painted right now. He never watches me anymore. He doesn't have time. Oh, that's really cute. He's so cute. What should I have him get for dinner tonight? I want a burger. I'm craving it probably because I'm severely anemic. Um, no, Bridget, it's butterscotch beer. And you can find it, usually in Utah, you can find it at like, what's, uh, Fresh Market usually has it. So, um, or like it used to be Albertsons, right? So I don't know where what it is where you live, but it used to be Albertsons and now it's Fresh Market. Um, and sometimes Macy's has it too. It is so good. Like you will not regret trying it. So do it. I was thinking Burger King, Paul. See, we're just like, it's so good, Bridget. It tastes like a melted butterscotch candy. It's the best thing in the whole world. Danny's going to come in and say hi, and then he's going to go back out and get food because he's coming to switch the cars because he has his big his big box truck and um, that's not fun to take through drive throughs so he's gonna come get the car I gotta give my car I gotta give the car back to my mom tomorrow I'm really bummed because we weren't approved for a car loan which is stupid but guys if you're young out there and get a credit card if you can like I know they're scary and I know that like we were terrified of them because we're like oh if we get a credit card, we'll just spend it because we're spenders and we'll just spend it. And so we thought we were doing the right thing and the responsible thing by not getting one, but apparently no credit is bad credit. And so I'm really frustrated because now I can't get a car loan, can't get a car unless we pay for the whole thing up front, which is impossible. Um, yeah, so start building your credit as soon as you can. I really wish I would have done that a long time ago. So do it so anyway <laughs> do an instant soup mukbang oh that sounds good everything sounds good i'm starving today hi tiffany i'm really sorry <laughs> you poor headphone users i'm so sorry can my parents co-sign i can ask them but i'm like on this kick where i just want to be responsible and i'm on my own again with danny we just want to be all responsible, blah, 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 blah. but I don't know. I could ask her. Um, really, Paul? Is that a good thing? I think that's a good thing. Credit cards are scary. Wait, what? Uh, Emily Davis said, credit cards are scary. I don't like the idea of spending money I don't have. Yeah, that was our thought, too. We're like, no, that's weird. But what my stepdad told me, um, and he taught me this when I was like 16, but I didn't listen. <laughs> he, 
he taught me everything. He's so good with money. He's the best person with money in the whole world. Um, and he taught me everything right after my mom married him, but I just was not listening. But he reminded me recently that you can build your credit by getting a credit card with like a really small balance, like a hundred dollars and only buy gas for the month with it. Cause that, you know, that you'll be able to pay back back because gas is something that you'd have to buy anyway. So instead of using your debit card or cash, then you use the credit card just for gas and just pay the gas, just pay that bill every month, which would be the same thing as if you were, had to get gas in another form, you just put it on the credit card. So I think we're going to do that soon, but oh, I just wish we would have done it already. I'm so annoyed. Maybe if, uh, I mean, like we're just going to start saving right now for a car. That's all we can do right now. I don't know. Mm. It's weird though, because Danny got a loan, like, I don't know, nine, 10 years ago, he got a loan for a car and we paid it off completely. So where is that credit? Why isn't that? I don't know. I don't know how anything works. I'm just, anyway. Ooh, Danny's home. Can you hear him? You sharded, Sarah? I did that yesterday. I love when Danny goes home. When I hear the little garage, when I hear the garage door opening, like that makes me so giddy inside. He's so cute. I love him a lot. I wonder if he's watching. He's probably watching again. Danny is the most beautiful, most specialist, most gorgeous, tall person in the world who has the ability to make me smile and make me laugh and make me Twitter painted no matter what time of the day it is, no matter how much I want to cut my wrist and kill myself, he is able to pull me out of it and to make me feel like I'm worth being here and that I really am beautiful even though I gained 30 pounds. He still thinks I'm beautiful and he's just wonderful and beautiful and awesome and perfect and beautiful and tall and gorgeous and wonderful and oh you're not watching i was not up until i was not there oh shoot hi hi <laughs> i drank your beer hi guys you parked in my spot you parked in my spot. Oh, you did. That wasn't me. Quite sure. I keep forgetting. I forget every time. Maybe. I'm so I gotta switch around real quick with your car park. The other neighbors parked on the side curb. I I'm not that in charge of that. That blue SUV out there. I'm not. There's no. There's no. Curb, there's no. What do you got there right now? What do you want for dinner? Burger King. What do you want? How did you know? Because I was watching. Oh, you were watching. <laughs> the junior burger you got was better. I didn't like the big, I don't like big burgers. You want a junior burger meal? Maybe. Let me look it up. I'll text you. Is that okay with you? Okay, bye. Yep. Is that what you want? Hold on. I got to text him what, what I want. Let me look at the menu. Hold on. Um, here, come talk to them while I do this. Come talk to them while I do this. And then, and then you can go, huh? Card, it should be in my wallet. I got it, I got it, I got it. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Talk to them for a second. I got to record it. I'm back for a second. Don't we? We're going to break it. No, it's just because we have to wait right there. This chair spins all the way around. And it's really hi, 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 hi. Love you too. Do I, do you like bacon on burgers? I do. What kind of question uh, is that? Who asked that? I think they should just make bacon. Except on, today, instead I of a burger. Like a, they should make a ba they should make a burger where the bun is made out of bacon. No, keep the bun because you have to have something to hold the dang thing together. The bacon. Just will. get rid of the burger. So a bacon sandwich. So yeah. a BLT. On a bun. Yes. Okay, you did not invent that. That's been around for a long time. <laughs> Can't 
Can I have a win today, please? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you have to tell them with cheese. They don't come with cheese. You have to request it there. Yeah. It's Burger King. That. It's annoying. Burger King, not Cheese King. <laughs> we should start a Cheese King. What would it be? Fried stuff with cheese. That's a throwback to a show. If you know what show that's from, tell us in the comments. Do you even know? How do you know that? You've seen it once. I've watched the whole thing with you. Once. How did you remember? Because I remember he stuff like that. He has the craziest, best memory. He, don't, he didn't go to college, but if he would have, he would have aced it. Because he is the best learner and listener in the whole world. He takes every ounce of information and has it forever. It drives me insane. <laughs> He's amazing. I'm like, just like gushing all over you today. Yeah, I, I don't know what, I on. don't know, I just miss you. Yeah, I miss you too. You're real cute and stuff. Okay, I need to concentrate. You answer some You questions. want me to sing? I don't sing. Yes, you do. I don't really sing. Where's your uke? It's over there. I can do the uke. I'll just go with you. Let's just. We're gonna sing a song and then we're gonna go. How about that? I Pick which song are you doing? Uh, what do you want? Which one have we not done in a while? Okay, take a vote. We can do Rainbow Connection again. We can do. Um, what's the one that I. Oh, let's do Creep. Creep. I missed, I, I, I forgot one of the notes. Except don't do, do it the way that we did it though. You're here before. Just I know, but I can't remember, I can't remember what the note. Is that it? Run, run, run. 
Ta freaking da. Okay, answer some questions. Well, uh, applause. Thank you. 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 <laughs> you guys are sweet. Clappy, clappy, clappies. Hearing. Oh, Judas Priest. This goes really quick. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, hearing other people's ages, girls, sometimes triggering. How do you, how do you manage that? And, by, and how do you manage helping others while helping yourself? I can answer that one. I mean, it's hard, right? It's super hard managing your, your eating disorder and trying to help everybody else's eating disorder without getting triggered. You know, that's like, that's like used to be an alcoholic, but I'm a bartender, you know, without drinking. It's got to be hard. I'm trying to get the other people to stop drinking. I mean, that's, you know... That's got to be super hard, and it is hard. What was the question? I was almost there. Uh, how do you, how do you basically listen to other people's uh, uh, eating disorders without being triggered, and then how do you manage your own eating disorder while trying to help others get out of their eating disorder? It's a tough one. It's tough. Now here's the here's the thing. Um, the cool, pro I, this is what I tell everybody. The coolest part about Shani's channel here is that it's a progression, progressive channel. It's not like she's the leading expert and whatever. She's learning as she's going, just as you guys are learning as she's going. So it's a continuous process, which is the cool part because you guys get to see this all live and, and in almost real time type of deal. And you can see the progressive that she does too. So I think that's the answer to that. Can you text it to me? Cool. Wait, I thought you were coming. I changed my mind. <sighs> You're a lot. They're just doing that today, aren't you? I need friends. How can you possibly help someone? How can you possibly help someone with an ED without hurting them? Um. Well, again, you. This is the hardest this, disease this, in the world because you have to face yeah. your addiction. It's not like Danny can just be like, take the food away and hide the food from me. It's not that it's not like drugs or alcohol where he can find it and hide it from me and take it and stuff. Like I have to eat. And so yeah. on the when I do have a hard day or whatever, first of all, he doesn't know. Well, I, I don't think it I, from I think him. that was just I think it was just general i don't think that was towards me oh it was just general and here's my analogy for that you ready for this ready if you are in the you're in a war war zone okay and you're shooting it out with the bad guys and you get hit so you're bleeding out you know and you can kind of you can kind of hold your wound and then your buddy gets hit well oh my gosh i'm shot so I better not take care of anybody else because I'm shot and I'm hurt. But I have more strength than the other guy does. And I can maybe save his life by dragging him over here, even though it's going to hurt me, even though it might hurt him. You're going to save both your lives doing it. That's how you do it. Because you're right. Look, this is not, <laughs> this is not some simple uh, turn off the switch, guys, right? I mean, come on. Anybody who knows this disease knows this is not a, a turn on, turn off the switch. I'm just not going to be this today. Dude, that's profound. Really? That's, that's not how this works. It's going to hurt. Any, any change is going to be uncomfortable. Anybody is, is, is going me. to be, is going to be, you know, any, any, any change, even normal change, even say it's not even a disease thing. Any normal change in a life is uncomfortable. And you can kind of direct that back to getting hurt. But you grow from that. You progress from that. You, you experience new stuff and you get used to that. Hot damn, I'm on one you today. Guys wonder, <laughs> you guys wonder what it is that Danny does to help me. This is it. If I ever come to him crying, I get a speech like this. And it just makes things 
he just brings you down to earth and points out the reality and makes you feel like you can fight it no matter what. It's amazing. Stop it. <laughs> You're cute. Thanks. You need to pop your blackheads. I already did once. When? Like two weeks ago? Listen, Danny is the biggest. Wisdom roll. I like that. Danny is the biggest pores in the, in the world. And so he gets like tons of blackheads and watching him pop them is so satisfying. I would do it myself, but it's so gross. gross that I can't touch it. But watching it is satisfying. I'm weird. Except I will never watch the zip popping videos online. Never. Those no, are... I don't really listen to Judas <clears throat> Priest. Judas Priest? Oh my gosh, Caitlin. Yes, of course. I have always, I've farted. I don't think I've ever pooped unexpectedly. I'm pretty much sure I've expected you have all the times. sharted so many times. Are you joking? I'm the one who does your laundry. Wow. Why don't you just, <laughs> don't you just put that out there for everybody? Everybody sharts. What's, what's embarrassing about that? Everyone does it. Whatever. There you go, Caitlin, but that's it. You're welcome. Your question. <laughs> Am I in trouble? Yep. Okay. TMI. Yes, thank you, Judy. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. It just came out, and this is live. I can't edit it. <laughs> Tiffany, you're laughing, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, I hope this doesn't creep you out, but I named a teddy bear Cute. after you. Aww. After who? Me or Danny? Here, scroll Better. back. Let's go back. Better be me. Whoa. Did you see that? Yeah, that was weird. Danny's the film industry hard. Sorry to keep asking. Want to know your perspective. It is... Nat, yeah, that's a good question. Ask it again in a second. The film industry is hard. You kind of have to have... Thanks, Tiffany. Something special to be in it because, yeah, as a freelancer, I saw something about freelancing in your question. As a freelancer, you have to be on the ball. You know, you can't just expect to have a job tomorrow or whatever. You have to be on the ball. So if a job's coming to an end, I have to start looking for a new gig, you know? Um, and luckily, I've been really blessed in just having gigs back to back to back to back, which is super nice. Um, and, and it's such a, bl a big blessing, but it is. It is hard. It can be very demanding at times. As sometimes the entire show depends on you, depends on what you bring to the table, depends on your job performance. So, I mean, and when did you realize how much money is going into that production? It can get really, it can get really, really intense. But it's finer than heck, so it doesn't really matter. You just make it good. You cut my tongue. How was that? With your sharpness. I shaved. <laughs> This is what marriage looks like. Someone just asked you a good question, but it left. Thanks, Tiffany. Ask that question again. Uh, who was but it? It was Nat. Right now, Nat asked it. Oh, cool. It was something about how do you deal with some with your loved one being suicidal, or how often do you or something like that. I'm sorry, I was reading stuff. What? How do, it's something about how do you deal with your loved ones um, having being suicidal all the time or something like that. I don't know. How to yeah. deal with someone who was that the, how did you word it, Nat? Can you time? type it again? Nat, ask a question again, please. Well, she said that was right, but type, oh, that type was it, it how yes, you that ask that because okay. I don't remember. I don't think that's what it was, but um, close enough. How do you deal with like loved war. ones Shame. being suicidal? How do you deal with loved ones being Amy, suicidal? Amy, I'll, I'll get back to that. Okay, so how do you deal with loved ones being suicidal? So I'm guessing you know somebody, Nat, that's suicidal. So how do you deal with that? How do I deal? How do, we, how do you deal with that? I think, this is just me, okay? Just the book of Dan here. I think that, number one, you have to have just a lot of faith in life. Number two, you really have to look at it as something that you are personally not responsible for. Okay, we each in this life are living our own individual lives. And while these li while our lives can touch other people's like marriage or family or friends and stuff like that, and I love that he's always been like that. He's always had that mentality. Like, I'm not going to make this about me. 
he would be, he would act like that. He would act like, I'm not going to make this about me. This isn't my fault. This is not my problem. Because if he had done that, then I think we both, that would have been unhealthy for both of us. So it was like, it was really, um, um, what's the word? It was really awesome, I guess, to hear him like be so real with me about it. What's the word? Just be refreshing. It was refreshing. very refreshing for him to be like, I'm not going to put this on myself because that will make you feel worse and that will make me feel worse. And there's no point in doing that. It's time to put the ownership where it belongs, which is yeah. my disease and not him and not me. Now that's not to say that you can't show support and love yeah, and which he's always done caring too. and do anything you can for the other person. But don't take it on yourself because that makes yeah. the suicidal person feel worse. Right. That, that would make me feel worse if Danny was like, oh, this is my fault right. that you want to die. I would be like, no, it's not. I don't know what it is. Right. I don't know why. I'm, like, stop saying that. Now you're making me feel even more stressed. On the other side of that coin, I think you have to be careful because I'm just going to say it like it is. It's, it's, it's just real, real talk tonight. Um, a lot of suicidal thinking thinkers out there want attention. They want somebody to feel, oh, good job, just that one, yep. They want somebody to feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. They Because they're sick of feeling bad for themselves, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They are sick of it. They've done it their whole lives. That's why they want to die. They're sick mm -hmm. of it. They want other people to feel bad for them. And they're looking at you. Oh, you're my best friend. Oh my gosh, please feel bad for me. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the hard part. Because you, oh my gosh, you're my best friend, you're my wife, you're my sister, you're my brother, you're my uncle, you're my cousin, you're my mom, whatever. You want to feel bad. And you can feel bad to a point as long as it's not poisoning you yeah. at the same time. Because what what will show them more attention is you continuing to live your life, supporting them, loving them as much as you can, but living your life fully too. Being because, that example too. Exactly, because you are being that example to them. Oh my gosh, my best friend, I just want to kill myself. But he's still living his life out there, even though he takes care Why of me. Why is he doing that? Yeah. How can he be doing that? Is that normal? Oh, maybe I should try that. Maybe I should look into that. Why does he like life so much? Like, what's the deal with that? Yep. Yeah. You're very yep. wise. Thank you. I'm starting. Me too. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll be back. We'll keep going until he gets back. He's so cute, guys. Thank you. Seriously, if it, this, he gives me this all the time. That's why I'm so addicted to him. That's why I'm so clingy to him. You okay? The key? The key? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, it did. Uh -huh. Okay, so anyway, yeah, these are the types of things that <laughs> I'm so, 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 so lucky to have him. How do I stop myself from binging? I don't know, maybe focus on loved ones. That helps me. There are too many tips to count and too many, I don't even know. How do I get motivated to get better? Well, Isabel, and my possible children. Yeah, Danny is the best. Thank you, Dora. <laughs> uh, okay, ask me some more questions. It's freezing in Utah. It is so cold in my house. <gasps> is it time to turn the heat on? I love the fall so much. <laughs> Yeah, he's amazing. He really is. He's so... Aw. I love that you're a part of this, Isabel. Your family is no help. It's hard when your family is triggering you and making you feel worse and just aren't helping, you know. Fall or winter? Are you asking which is my favorite? Fall is... My favorite seasons are fall and Christmas. Christmas doesn't mean snow. Christmas season is the season of Christmas. So it's like a feeling that people get and a kindness that people get and an excitement that people get. It's like a, it's, 
I consider it a season because it's Christmas season, but I don't like the weather around Christmas. As far as the weather goes, I love the fall and I also love other things about fall. So fall and the Christmas season, but not winter, but the Christmas. I'm ugly. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. That's the best compliment I've gotten all day. Oh, I am ugly. Look at that. Oh, I feel so good about myself now. Thank you. I hope your day gets better. I hope you can be nicer to people because nobody deserves that. So, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, thank you, Paul. Oh, did Paul? Did you put him in timeout? Yes. Oh, are you still connected, Paul? <gasps> are you still my, um, what is it called? Paul figured out last time we live streamed that he could connect to it somehow so that he could be, he could monitor the comments and he can put people in timeout. He can block people. So go ahead and tell me I'm ugly all you want and Paul will block you. So, cause he's my manager. Yeah, he's the moderator and he's like so good at it. I'm so glad. Paul is my moderator, and he sends people away when they treat me like poo. I wish I could poo and not gain 30 pounds. Who cares? Why do we care? Why do we care? Ugh. My voice is pretty. That was not pretty. But thank you. <laughs> so is that person gone now, Paul? How does that work? Are they in timeout? I wish Jacob would tickle me with a fluffy sweater. <laughs> Tiffany, I know what you mean, but that sounds very dirty. Actually, you probably meant it dirty. <laughs> I love Tiffany so much, you guys. Put their butt in jail. Yes, Samantha. Oh, I'm not reading. Hold on. Oh, everything's going too fast. Uh, savvy, my ex wants to get back together, but I don't know what to do. He keeps texting me and messaging me on Instagram. Any advice? Is this the dude that wanted you to sleep with him and you said no? Because if it is, then he's going to need to have boundaries with you and respect your decisions when it comes to sex. So... And if it's someone else, then I don't know. Because that's the only one you've ever told me about. Oh, I could just sniff this, to be honest. Hmm. Becca Garvin, that's a good question. Says, hi, Shani, if someone goes years without binging and purging, does the bulimia disappear or does this disease still remain without the actions? I wonder if there's an actual answer for this. I know what my answer is. Yes, it's butter beer, butterscotch beer, and it's so good. Um, but now I'm kind of curious if it's like an actual. So I think that it's something that you always have. Um, how do I word this on Google? Can you... How, how do you, how do I word that? Um, if you stop eating disorder behaviors, will you still have an eating disorder all the time, even though you're not doing the eating disorder behaviors, will you still have the thoughts? <laughs> it took all of it. <sighs> I'm in a weird mood today. <sighs> I don't know, but in my opinion, in my opinion, it's something that's, that sticks with you forever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm in a weird mood. Check my Insta. Why? What's happening? <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> I wish Stephanie was here. I feel like I'm in a Tiffany mood right now. I feel like I'm in a Tiffany when she's goofy. If you guys don't know who Tiffany is, by the way, Tiffany Gray has two channels on YouTube. One is a vlogging and one is for her music. She sings. She is gorgeous at singing. She um, 
talks about being autistic and she's almost completely blind and she has the voice of an angel and she is so funny. Like we have the same dirty, inappropriate sense of humor and so like when no one else will laugh at me, I know Tiffany will and I know that Tiffany will get my jokes and will get it because she's amazing. But so if Tiffany was here, I would, oh, we would, our collab would be epic. It would just be so inappropriate, so inappropriate, which I would love and she would love, but I'm sure our families would not. But, oh, I just love her. Anyway, go subscribe to her channel. It's Tiffany Gray Music on YouTube. Show her some love. I think she just passed a thousand subscribers, I think. And she deserves like 10 million more than that. So please go subscribe. Uh, your family doesn't watch your vlog channel. That's probably a good idea. See, I need to have a second channel that's just an inappropriate channel. So that my family won't complain anymore. Because I'm, I'm naughty. I'm horrible. I can't help it. These thoughts. It's just the way that I think. And it's like I was thinking about this the other day. And I grew up, well... I sing a song today. I don't know if I'm going to post it, but I made a song today. Um, and it's, uh, what is it called? I don't know. But it brought me back to parts of my childhood, like the parts where I wasn't allowed to do anything, like, to the extreme. I wasn't allowed. Like, it, like I was like, ugh, like, there's morals and then there's control. Like, it wasn't just about me doing the right thing and having good morals and doing those things. It was more about control. I felt very controlled by my, not my mom, but my my dad. I hope he's not, well, it's fine if he is. He knows all this. Um, and we're all good now, so it's fine. But, uh, so when my mom divorced my dad, I just went crazy and I rebelled like crazy and I let people do whatever they wanted to me and with me and, um, where was I going with this? What was my point? Oh, so I, ever since then, I've just felt like such a rebel. And then like, I, I started to like behave better, I guess, um, near the end of high school. And then I married Danny and we went through a really rough patch and separated and we got back together and we just kind of became best friends again, except this time it was like real and I don't know it just we just found that we both have a really dirty sense of humor and a weird strange I don't know it's just it's just I have no idea where I was going with that so my mind just went blank I don't know um, Samantha says uh, what aspects of Mormonism do you find the most positive and the most negative the most negative well no the most let's start with, okay so the most positive I think is that we will be able to be with our families forever, for eternity. So even if we die, we are promised, um, if we, we are promised blessings, if we do the right thing in life and, uh, you know, follow what's right and what's best for us, we are promised that we will be able to see our loved ones again, especially if you are sealed together forever, which um, outside of our religion, that would be considered being married. Being sealed is what we call it, where we're sealed together in marriage in one of our sacred temples. Um, and we believe that if you're sealed together, you'll be able to be together forever and ever. So even if I die or Danny dies, we'll be together for again and we'll be together for eternity. The worst part about it for me is some of the people in the church. I believe that, I've said this so many times, the gospel itself is perfect, but the people in it are not. And I think that goes for any religion, but especially um, in ours, it, it does make me mad when people in my religion turn away people because people don't do what we are taught to be the right thing. So when people turn people away because they're gay or because they do drugs or drink or um, gamble or whatever our other you know, rules are like, I find that really, really irritating and annoying because we are taught, like, that's not what we're taught. That's not what we're taught. It's the people that do that. It's not our church and it's not our rules to do that. If you want to come to our church and you're gay or you're drunk or high or you can, you're welcome there. We're not going to turn you away. Like anybody is welcome there. Um, but it just, it's, it's hard to see people that 
<laughs> to see the world hate us because of that, like because of the way that some people choose to treat people. But I will never, ever treat people like that. Like, that's one of the things that really bothers me. So I guess that's not technically anything about my actual religion that bothers me, but it's something about my church and the people there. But I don't know. Unless you're drunk and belligerent or something. Well, yeah, but that's for anything. I know what you mean, Paul. Yes. <laughs> that's for anywhere. They'll kick you out anywhere if you're like that, but you know what I mean. Anyway, how am I doing lately with my sniffing addiction? That's a good question. I haven't sniffed cleaners in a very long time. I have sniffed markers a couple times, and I know Paul is like, I've seen you sniff markers, but not often and not much, and so I don't consider that a problem. Just if I am using a Sharpie, I'll just smell it and then use it. Like I won't like sniff for 10 minutes and get high. I'll just like smell it and then use it. So <laughs> I'm weird. Starving guys. I love you too, Julia. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Emma. Did I see your music video about Jacob? No, but I'll watch it later. When did you post it? Oh, I like the smell of cigarette smoke too. Mm-hmm. I love the smell of cigarette smoke, coffee, gasoline, cleaners. Yeah. You're amazing too, Alien Queen. Thank you. It's on your diary channel? Okay, I'll check it out too. <sighs> Have I told you that before, Paul? Paul said it reminds me of Lagoon. Are you talking about cigarette smoke? Have I told you about this? Because that's exactly what I think of. I don't know. Alien Queen is Pandora. Oh, that's right. I knew that. <laughs> you keep changing your names on me. Pick a name and stick with it, Dora. You love the smell of really old books. Interesting. I can see that. I can see that for sure. That would remind me of like going to the library when I was little and all the used books that I didn't read, but I at least checked them out and smelled them. That's weird, Paul. We think so much alike. We're like twins. He's my brother. He's like my twin brother, I think. The smell of new books. I like the smell of new books too. Can I talk about my agoraphobia? Well, um, it's something that I have had to learn how to fake it and I'm so good at it by now because I've been doing that my entire life, my whole life. Um, I started getting anxiety and freaking out if my mom left me around the age of three, maybe two or three. Um, and I just remember her trying to like get me to preschool and then kindergarten and then all the grades and and my church classes, my primary classes, and every single time she left, I just would scream and cry for hours, and I just would not leave her side. And then that, as I got older, it kind of turned into more of a, I wasn't as clingy to her, but I was just more so like a homebody and scared to go out and scared to hang out with people because I felt so gross. And I was bullied a lot in elementary school. Ooh, that was a good one. Um, and so as I got older, I realized, like, I think for me, the turning point was in sixth grade when I got the lead in the lead role in a Shakespeare play. And I kind of had to like, like, I don't know what it is, but that built, that built my confidence quite a bit. And it was like I felt good and I felt confident. And then I went to junior high the next year and I felt overwhelmed. I felt small. I felt nothing because I was at the bottom of the school. And I don't know, I, I just all of a sudden got it like rushing back. And so by then I knew what I looked like and how I sounded when I was doing good for that one year. And so I started like acting like that. <laughs> and then over the years, I just have gotten it's just a habit you will never you you won't know um unless you know me really well it's hard for most people to tell how 
agoraphobic I am or how hard it is for me to be in public or how hard it is for me to talk to people. Um, but it's just because I've spent my whole life perfecting my craft. Okay, you get the idea. I'm rambling now. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh, everyone's triggering off the smells combo. Wait, what? Did I trigger people? I'm sorry. Let's change the subject then. Wait, I wasn't talking about smells. That was like 10 minutes ago. What is happening? Fake it till you make it exactly, Emma. Exactly. Yes, I did know that. Fun fact, did you know that agoraphobia is actually the avoidance of situations or places due to panic attacks, not open spaces? Yes, I did know that. And I know that I have that too. I don't know. Well, what's the, I mean, I consider it to be all in one thing and maybe there's a different name for it, but it's like, I have that really bad. Like I freak out when I'm supposed to go out in public or when I'm supposed, like I don't sleep the night before if I have to leave my house the next day. Cause I get freaked out in my mind. It builds up and then I can't sleep and it's horrible. And I have an anxiety attack every single time. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> I don't know what you said, but I'm sure it was funny. I can't find it. Um, Samantha says, do you think makeup can be both, uh, can both be hurtful and helpful to body image? Yeah, I do. I think that, well, I don't know. For some people, like myself, I... I'm an artist and I like makeup for the fact that it, what it does to my face artistically and like how it makes my eyes pop. I'm not wearing makeup down. How it makes my eyes pop and it makes my skin look like it's glowing, which I enjoy. Like I think that's pretty and a lot of people are like that and I think that's okay. I think that a lot of people get shamed if they like makeup, um, but I think it's totally, totally fine to enjoy makeup, to enjoy putting on makeup. Um, but it gets dangerous for some people when they obsess over it uh, to the point of it takes over their whole life and then they end up going even further than that and getting plastic surgery and just trying to reach for this beauty that they think in their mind that they can never reach. So I guess it depends on the person, situation, but um, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'm a makeup artist, but I have BDD, so that's how I started. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard with when you have BDD also. Yeah, Tiffany. Except I'll freak out and I won't be able to sing in front of people. But I'll try. Do I use any self-harm alternatives? Yes. I do. My fidget spinner helps. I color. Um, I'll draw. On my wrist with like a dark red marker to make it look like blood because that will like visually tell me that I've done it even though I haven't um, I spend time with Danny just whatever I can do that day whatever it is thanks Paul everyone give this stream a thumbs up Um, Miss World says, what do you think about people who are very negative towards eating disorders? I've heard before that bulimics are stupid and that it's all their fault. That was crazy to me and hurtful. Oh, it makes me so mad. That's like somebody coming up to you and being like, oh, you have cancer? Oh, that's your fault. <laughs> you should have done this better or you should have done that better. You have skin cancer? Oh, you shouldn't have gone out in, this, in the sun. Okay, that's actually... That's kind of true, and I can say that because I had that, <laughs> or I had the pre-cancer. I had a pre-cancers. Okay, but that's like saying, you get my point. That is so stupid. It makes me so mad. Like, how do you even, why even would somebody do that and say something like that to another person? It blows my mind, blows my mind. Yeah, they think it's a choice. They don't get that it's an illness. It's a disease. It's an addiction. It's just horrible. What happened? Oh, Lissy. Lissy Nicole, my Nana passed away two weeks ago. 
my grandpa a couple of days ago. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, Lissy. Oh, you're in my prayers, honey. That's terrible. Oh, that's so quick that that happened. To have both of them. They're together again, right? Oh. That's horrible. You just talked to him? Oh, so was it expected with both of them? Yeah, Tiffany, yes. Like, just like people don't understand that I have no control over my autistic behaviors, meltdowns, shutdowns, super sensitivity, etc. Exactly. People are just ignorant, really. That's why we need to keep educating them. So... Yes and no. Oh, dang it. I'm so sorry. Josh says, can you be completely unaware that you have an eating disorder? I'm just trying to understand a little bit. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah, kind of. Like, maybe not unaware, but just uneducated if you don't know about it yet. Like, that's how I was. I didn't know that I had an eating disorder until I was diagnosed with bulimia, but I had an eating disorder from the age of five to 13 when I started bulimia. I just didn't know what it was. So some people just don't even know that they have an eating disorder like me. But other than that, I think, I don't know. Yeah, no. I think it's possible for people to just not no, or not believe it, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I had a friend with anorexia who, who was convinced her, her problems were gastrointestinal. That happens. I believe it. Um, I'm sorry, Lissy. I'm numb and I don't have no one to talk to, like a close friend to be able to call or message privately. I'm sorry, Lissy. Who on here wants to message Lissy privately? That would be really nice. Um, hmm. Is it period? Is it possible that my period never started because of my bulimia? Um, like you haven't had it yet. Like it never even started for the first time, or you lost it. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know because that's kind of more common in, I know, honey, I'm sorry, Lizzie. It's, I know, I'm sorry. Um, what was I saying? This is hard. It's so hard when you guys want to talk to me. I know it's hard. I hate this. This is the part of YouTube that I hate. I wish I had. It just wouldn't be unfair, but message me and maybe I can send you a quick message back because I want you to know that I do care about you and I'm so sorry you're going through this. I really am. Can't imagine the pain you're going through. Um, I forget what I was talking about. But... Aww. Hi. Did I get my peel box fixed? No. Because I'm irresponsible, of course. It's been a rough week. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was going to do it today after my doctor, but I was so tired because I barely slept last night. My doctor was this morning, so I came home and I crashed. By the way, I wonder if my niece is watching me. She's probably not. My niece, Kaylee, I had a... Uh, I put up a video a couple days ago for her. She was running for student council at her school. And I had to put it on YouTube because that's the only place that they could extract it from because they live five hours away. Um, so that's the only way I could get the video to her. So I posted it on YouTube. And a lot of you watched the video, even though I told you in the comments, just ignore this. It doesn't have anything to do with my channel. But anyway, she did not win and she is heartbroken. So if you know what I'm talking about, that video, please go to that video and leave her some comments and tell her how awesome she did because she did, and I'm so proud of her, and it really took a lot for her 
to do that and put herself out there like that. And she was so excited and so sure that she would win. And she just was heartbroken. So if you have a minute, please go do that for her. And then I'll tell her to like, look at the comments and see that, you know, everybody agrees with me that, you know, she should have won and just tell her the same thing I told her that you're proud of her no matter what you're proud of her for even trying because that's that's a big step that's something I could never do Danny's home I'm gonna go so give me one more question I'm gonna pick one that I haven't done in a while so Paul you can hear the garage door from here I knew it hi French fries for me? Yeah. So everyone asks me a question and I'll pick one. And I'll let Danny pick one too. Hmm. Yes, I'm drinking, but it's not alcohol. <laughs> it's, it's butterscotch beer. It's delicious. Hmm. Your sweet in this world. How am I really? I'm struggling, really. Thank you. I'll talk about that more soon. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. These are burned. You're yeah. gonna like them. Huh? You're gonna like them. No, they're good. Oh, they're hot. Yeah. Cool. Everything, everything was kind of fresh, actually. Is there about clothes in a bunch of people got lime? It's so hot. Lissy, where do you live? Can you write that down? The number? Mm -hmm. Sad that she just put it up again. Let's see. Check. Nine, two, three. Oh, I lost it. Who needs to call the suicide helpline? Yes, please do. Wait, what did Alyssa say? Um, can you find Alyssa's? I want to die tonight. Why? Listen, lately I've been experiencing what we all think is borderline personality disorder. I haven't been diagnosed yet. But I was talking to my doctor about this today. Literally, and I've talked to you guys about this too. I've said this before, but I was telling her, literally one hour, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I am the most inspirational, happy, hopeful, beautiful, gorgeous person in the whole world. And I just want to live forever and help lots of people. And, blah, blah, blah. and then literally an hour later, I'll be like, it makes absolute perfect sense for me to kill myself. Because Danny would be better off, my Shannon Dannys would be better off, everybody would, everyone would learn from, like, my point is that you might change your thinking in an hour or in a day or in a week. And I just don't want you to do, like, what is that saying? Somebody said, what is that saying? Uh, something about, a like, a temporary, what is that saying? Somebody tell me. But just know, I mean, look at all of these people that love you and that are encouraging you and they are all human beings just like you and they don't lie like my shanty fannies are the best people in the world and you're one of them so believe them and listen to them and you went from 110 to 144 well i went from trigger warning i went from 160 to 190 in five weeks so does that mean i should kill myself Didn't think so. I've never said my weight. You will. Absolutely not. Exactly. Do you think I'm like worthless and ugly now and like I shouldn't live? 
because I gained 30 pounds? No, you don't. Because you see the beauty in me, and I see the beauty in you. And so do all of these people. And you're wonderful. You're beautiful too, Alyssa. You're so beautiful. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, it's rude when people tell me I'm ugly. Why would you do that? You're <laughs> such a fat, ugly bitch. You should kill yourself. You should get raped. Anyway, not that weight matters, but I'm just saying I get it. Like, I get it. And I've had moments where I'm like, oh my gosh. All of my hard work that I did to get down to 145 from 220 a few years ago. Hard work? No. I starved myself. And my first thought when I stepped on the scale at the doctor was like, what? So I've gained 45 pounds in the last year and 20 of those pounds are in the last week? Like, all of that hard work went down the drain. But it's not work. It's not even worth being labeled as something good like that. Like, what? Like, no, we don't deserve to be thinking like this. You certainly don't. You are beautiful. I want you here. We all want you here. Thank you, Paul. Purple hearts. Everybody give her purple hearts. <coughs> Okay. First Just sucked up. a fry down me. <gasps> Arms up. Arms up. Don't tickle me. Okay. <coughs> mm. Purple hearts for Alyssa. I can't talk. Can you tell them? Purple hearts for Alyssa. Can you say it? Purple hearts for Alyssa. Everybody, purple hearts for Alyssa. Demi okay. Lovato is gay? <coughs> Purple heart. <coughs> Aw, Lissy, it's for you too. Purple hearts for all of us. Look at all, see, see what I'm talking about, Alyssa? Look at this. Have you ever had that many people band together with you? <coughs> there you go. So quickly and so no question and just unconditional love like because you're worth it and they know that oh demi is bi she came out oh interesting didn't know that <laughs> juliana if you were to describe what an eating disorder is to a person in one sentence what would it be hmm I would say it's a lifeless bitch of a disease that kills you slow, slowly and makes you feel like you're dying every day, but you can't stop because somehow your twisted brain makes you believe that it's a good thing for you. That was a really long sentence. How would you sum it up? <coughs> What are we saying? If you were to explain an eating disorder to someone in one sentence, what would the sentence be? Or to describe it, I guess. Describe an eating disorder to someone in one sentence. How about one word? Do one word. Shit. Sorry. I'm cursing a lot. Sorry, guys. Poisonous. <coughs> I just spilled my fries. Do you, did you get fries too? Yeah. You like so pizza? Are these <laughs> <laughs> you don't care? I don't. <coughs> you, didn't, you need them off the floor. Oh, it's really stuck. Okay. I know I already said this, but for real, one more question and then right. we're going. <laughs> oh, Tiffany. I got a water. Oh, yeah. But thank you. <coughs> Daddy. 
I can't breathe. Okay, I have like a piece of fry stuck in my throat. It's super, I hate that when you like suck. <clears throat> yeah, that's what we were talking about. Thank you. Oh, you might not be watching for that. Really? <clears throat> well, you see what Paul just did? Yep. Okay. <coughs> that is pretty music. Where did that come from? Oh, I must have changed it when I was texting, when I was testing the different tones. That's funny. <coughs> it's like I can't get out. I can't talk. Sweater land. You could be like the mayor of Sweaterland. When is the last time I washed my ass? Um, yesterday. Here's the thing. What are you doing that you're alone on a Friday night <laughs> that you would come to a random live stream with somebody you obviously don't know and ask them how clean their butt is? Like, go on a date with I've someone. I've got nothing better to do. Go watch a movie. Ass. Watch a movie. Go get a burger. Go to ice cream with your friend. That's way more interesting than this. Read a book. <clears throat> Is my butt clean? <laughs> I know, right? Why are, why are you asking me this? Nope. Super dirty. <laughs> it's so dirty. <clears throat> I hate ending these things, but I always never, I always end up just not wanting to go because I love you guys and I love doing this. You just sharded, Sarah. Good job. That's good stuff. Who made me get help? The first time it was my mom. <clears throat> then when I got married, it was Danny. Love you too, Dora. Say bye to Dora. Bye, Dora. Aw, thank you, Nini V. Can anorexia be seasonal and then binging be another season? That's from Crystal Perez. Um, I think that maybe in a way, because I think that depression can be seasonal and some people, their eating disorders are triggered by their depression. So like for instance, Summer for me is my most triggering season. I hate the summer. I hate the sun. <clears throat> I hate the heat. I hate all of that. And so I tend to stay inside more often. And then I get more depressed. And then I get more tempted to do my eating disorder. So I think it's more of like a, like a, you know, I don't know. I just, I think that would have to do with depression. And not, I, I don't know about just eating disorders. I don't know. You hate summer too? I'm not alone. I get so depressed in the summer. Can't even tell you. That's probably why I relapsed. <clears throat> um, winter is most triggering for you. Aw. I don't like being outside in the winter, but I love the look of winter. It's so beautiful. But it doesn't trigger me. Randall says, what's your dad doing on his phone? <laughs> I think about 45 times we've gotten comments like, is that her dad? Why is she kissing her dad on the mouth? That is so gross. Well, this is my husband. We're learning how to do the phone, you young whippersnapper. 
Why don't you go get a life? Uh, sorry, just got oh, into the character. What's that? I got that. I, that's your dad. What's the character? That's your dad. That's my dad. Uh huh. I don't want that. That's not a good dad. Two of crap. Look, it's been a long freaking day and a longer freaking week, so. <laughs> yeah, no, Danny is, Danny's actually only two years older than me, two and a half years older. Do I really look that old? Yeah, it's. Does she really look that young? It's me, people have told me that. But that's because I don't go in the sun, like we just talked about, and, um. And I'm in the sun all the time. Yeah, but especially <laughs> if you go read the comments on the Day in the Life of the Bulimic video, People will be like, why is she kissing her dad? What? Is that her dad? Is that her uncle? This is creepy. This is so inappropriate. Like, how old is he? Like, he's a pedophile. <laughs> okay, I'm 32. I'm, I'll be 33 next month. And he's 35? 6? How old are you? 35. <clears throat> 35. Oh, so we are two years. No. Are we a year and a half apart or two and a half years? I think we're two and a half. I keep saying one more question. So I'm going to ask Danny a last question. Last question, then we're going to go shower and eat. Or go ask bed. both of us. Ask both of us a question. Ready? Go. And go. And we'll wait to see all of them and then we'll decide. <gasps> Can you hook up Netflix for me on my TV? Is that a question? Haters Back Off comes out on my birthday. Not really. It comes out on midnight on my birthday night. So, like, it comes out on October 20th, and my birthday is the 19th. So, I'll be up late anyway because I'm always up late, and it will still be considered my birthday because I haven't gone to bed yet. And so, Haters Back Off Season 2 comes out on my birthday. I cannot be more excited. You're excited too? Yes. Uh, that's a good one. Keep going. Hmm. Can you be more specific, Tiffany? Do you ever get scared that you're going to drive the other one off? That's my biggest fear. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Oh, these are all good questions. Are you going to watch It, Danny? No. I don't like movies like that. But you can have fun. No thanks. Oh, I feel sick. I need to eat. Uh. Hmm. Uh. These are good questions. In a nutshell, yes, Tiffany. <clears throat> Hi, Marina. Love you. Uh, okay. So, let's do this one, babe. Okay, I'm ready. Put your phone down. You can't concentrate if your phone is sure on. Sure can't. Are you there yet? Waiting for you to grab the phone so oh, you'll hear it. I'll drop it in. Um... <gasps> oh dear. Okay. So Becca Garvin says, What I mean by Ed talking to you, is it a voice or do you feel like there is another person beside you talking to you? Wait, is this for both of how is this for both of us? It's not really for me. Oh, it's not really for you. But I feel um, Back on the phone. It kind of feels <laughs> Yeah, it kind of feels like there's another person talking to me, but I can't, like, identify the voice. I just hear it. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, a, I think it's a male. Yeah, it's a male, but I don't know how to explain it. It's just a different type of voice. It's not like a normal voice. I don't know how to explain this. Okay, ask us both a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain that. That's hard to explain. Hmm, that's a good one. Okay, Miss World says, how to forgive yourself and and move on with life. Sometimes I feel trapped and like there is no way out and no future. 
Well, both of us have been in a situation where we had to forgive each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, but forgiving yourself is a whole different thing. Super. What do you have to say on it? Um, I think it's just as important to forgive yourself as it is to receive forgiveness from the person you hurt. I almost think it's more important. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's what I like to do with situations like this. Break it down into basic processes right if you wrong somebody the process usually goes um that's not distracting paul told me to do it at all okay thanks paul um the process goes if i hurt somebody you know i do them wrong or whatever and then um it hurts them it hurts me and then the and then usually the other person gets over it first because you either you know you make amends or whatever the case is restitution all that other stuff whatever the case is the other person usually gets over it first and you end up beating the crap out of yourself for the next up team whatever x amount of days months years type of thing which would make you want to do it again because you hate yourself so bad that yeah. you're like I might as well keep going <clears throat> and keep hurting people because right. I don't respect myself anymore right. And I think the key right there is to kind of insert yourself into that process of, okay, I have done everything that I could, I can do to make right what I did wrong and then accept that because the other person, again, has most likely moved on. Think about personal stuff that you've gone through or you've been hurt by somebody. Are you still holding the grudge from that person? Think about it. Are you still holding that grudge? No, you've probably forgotten about it. Cripes, somebody wronged me today and I just barely remembered the dang thing. I don't care. You know why? Because it, at, the, at the time it seems huge, it seems big, it's world changing, world ending, whatever. Now, at 11 o'clock at night, I'm home and it's over, or 11.30, whatever, and it's over, and I don't, I don't even remember this stupid thing. In the, in the end, it's the person yeah. who did something wrong that will live with it for yeah. the rest of their lives. Here's a good example. I got a perfect example. On the last shoot, I was working on a truck. The little girl who was helping us uh, accidentally put down the ramp, and I stepped off the truck and slammed into the freaking... Did I not show you that? No. Oh, yeah. That's where I got the tiger stripe stuff in my arm. Oh, that's what that was? Mm -hmm. <gasps> so I fell off the truck and, and just body slammed into the ground pretty much. I was holding this big old box. And I immediately popped up, and I was fine. But she felt terrible. She came up to me like every single second. Dude, I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't mean to. It was just an accident. I didn't Aww. even care. Yeah. Because I knew she would feel bad. I didn't want to make her feel bad. It was just an accident. I could have done better not to watch my but steps she too. she was worried. That yeah, she, she was totally Aww. worried. She's like, dude, I thought I killed you. I'm sorry. You know what I, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it, and I totally forgot about it. Even though I had scars, it hurt me. I had, I, I still have scars from it. Right? That's physical pain to me. I'm not going to remember that. I don't care. It was an accident. She, I guarantee you, is probably still beating herself up about it. So from that point of view, if you're the one that did that wrong, put yourself in the other person's point of view and, she, and, and realize after you try and make it as best repair as possible, you know, accept the fact that, oh, you know what? He's probably over it. I'm, I need to move on. Try better, do better, learn from the mistake, because I guarantee you she won't ever put that ramp down unless she tells somebody who's up on the truck about it, mm -hmm. right? That's how it works. That's how it works. It is never, ever, ever meant to be that, that pain with you forever. You learn from the mistake and you move on. Not... Learn from the mistake and carry that pain with you for the rest of forever. That's not the way it works, people. Mm -hmm. I know your brain wants to tell you that, but that ain't how it's supposed to be. You're wise. Me too. All right. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you, Paul, for mediating. That's a big help for Thanks, me. Thanks, Paul.
Um, that's awesome. And yeah, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to try and get this one to do one with me because you guys have been begging for it. So yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow for that. And we love you. And remember forever and always that you are beautiful. You're worth it. And we are too. Thank you for watching.